Hold on. Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone. We're live with another Pedal to the Metal podcast. I'm one of your hosts, John. To my right, I have the... I, hi, hi, L68. Who the fuck are you? You are the. I don't know. I'm to your left, actually, because I'm kin- in the Midwest. You're in New York. You're gonna. So you're gonna right be to your left. We've we've come we've come to the conclusion <laughs> you're gonna be my new dad. Hi, L68. Everybody. Hi, Al. How you doing? Great. Been enjoying the new Tomb Raider immensely. So it's uh, been a very well deserved nine uh, zero. Didn't I get nine? Right. Yeah. Yeah. On Games on GameStop. Yep. It GameSpot, I've yeah. got nine, so it's been uh, really good. So. I was surprised I got it from um, Gamefly, but they sent it, so I immediately dove into that because that's my favorite genre of games. So, now how long can Fall you keep that game? As long as he wants. As long as you want. So he can keep he can keep Tomb Raider for it. So because Tomb could, Raider's he, he game, could, I, he, he could keep Tomb Raider for fourteen months. As long as he keeps paying his monthly fee. Yes. Yeah, but they give you an option to buy it too, which uh, I might do that. But it's very good though. It's um. But yeah, it's my favorite game. I already, I loved the last one. I played it three times, so yeah, um, I, I did know I was too. gonna love this one. And I, I told before, my had audio issues that uh, I love Fallout too. I played about hour, hour and a half of that, but I can't balance in between a role playing game no, and some no. other games. So, I, so I'm gonna um, finish up Tomb Raider, and then uh, I might start over. But I'm, I think I, I think I know what's up. The crafting system seems pretty sketchy, but um, anyway. That's what I'm doing. I beat Halo 5 and Call of Duty 2, so. Nice. nice. Another staple of Pedal to the Metal, Jeff Powder, the Eroika. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Powder. Hey, guys. What's going on? Just uh, nice to be back. Tell me, uh, why do you look like the guy from the movie Powder tonight? Because I have a desk lamp. Ready? I'm going to go to Powder Mode. <laughs> oh, that was, that was Powder Mode? That's Powder Mode. Oh, my Hold God. On. Yeah, no, I have a desk. I have a desk lamp that's uh, very hot and bright. It's one of those IKEA ones with the metal. I'm not going to describe it, I guess. But um, no, no, I yeah. want you. I want you to. Just... Hi, you got to stop moving, dude. You got to stop moving. <laughs> Jesus Hi, remember... Christ. Hi, you remember, <laughs> you remember Charizard on the first couple podcasts, Hi? Yes. That's that's, that's what you. you just sounded like. So okay, oh, no, Jeff. Right. Jeff, I want you to explain yeah. the IKEA lamp to me in detail, in full detail. It's got a huge throbbing base with a <laughs> long shaft. Uh huh. It has a crook about halfway up that <laughs> sends it to about eighty degrees to the left. Okay, I like and, that. And then it's got a huge mushroom-shaped head on it. Okay. And it sprays light everywhere. Does it hit all the right spots? Eh, occasionally. Okay. Occasionally. Cool. Anyways, and uh, yeah. So me. <laughs> <laughs> and then the sometimes always special guest coach. I don't know how you described my equipment so perfect. <laughs> yeah. Throbbing base. <laughs> Throbbing base. Swipe curvature to the left. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. just a straight shooter. Mine doesn't go anywhere. Left, right. It stands right to attention. John's like a John's like a lab rat. He's got huge balls and a tiny shaft. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You're gonna see him this weekend if you keep taunting me like that. Oh, uh, come on! Oh, uh, you brought it up this time, dude. Yeah, I did. You did it to yourself. Yeah. You so how you guys been? Good. How's everyone else been? Good. Yeah. That's Great. good. Grand. Wonderful. <laughs> so, Great. Grand. So, uh, wait, I want to say something. What? I told my son. I told my son I would do this. My son Derek is better at Super Meat Boy than John and Jason and Heil. He's arguably as good as I am at it. Is he, so, is he coming on? Is he coming on the podcast? He oh, well, he would love to come on Pedal to the Metal, but I won't let him yet because I don't trust you guys. But you'll t- you'll tell him like there's no Santa or something awful. So, um, <laughs> So, but here's here for real though is he is ranked in the advanced levels of Super Meat Boy. He is ranked seventh in the world on the Cotton Row, on one of the on one of the levels. Post when you beat the game, when you unlock the super insane difficulty levels, he is ranked in one of those levels, number seven in the world. Tell me which one it is, so I can shatter his dreams. Yeah, oh, like you shatter, <laughs> my, like like Jason shatters my Ollie Ollie dream. Oh, <laughs> that's just mean. That's a burn. <laughs> You know how hard he's tried to beat your Ali Ali two score. I know it. Mu- it sits there and taunts you, doesn't and it? And you know what? You're a fucking jerk. He asked. You I won't tell advice. you how. You just he go. Won't. He won't because I'll beat him. 
you just go <laughs> get good. Yeah, get good. You know what, dude? Here's the thing. Ollie Ollie 2. Morse code. Kyle, <laughs> stop typing. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus Christ dude, almighty. Dude, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Ollie Ollie is that two. all you have to do is what you're supposed to do in the game all that the time. That doesn't make sense. That's like that's like hiring a life coach and him <laughs> telling you to breathe. <laughs> Remember, kind of. all you have like, to do in life is breathe. Listen, when you're playing Ali Ali 2, how do you score points? Tricks. By doing what? Okay. Well, you do all the reverse yeah, how many and the times grinds that? and Right. So 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 what do you have to do more of to score more more at? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? Stop. See, not I'm not going to spell it out for you. You're not I, helping. You know That's not the I'll, answer. I'm going to bring my Vita. I'm going to bring my Vita down with me this weekend, and I'm going to sh- I'm going to let you observe the master at work. No, you have to play it on PS4. PS4. No, why would I want to play it on the inferior console? I'd much rather play it on on the Vita. What? My Super Meat Boy records all on the Vita. You know those transfer over to your PS4. Uh, oh, I know. Right. I know. Ollie so Ollie, dude. My Ali Ali scores, all of them were done on the Vita. So, not one oh, so of those scores was on the, on the Vita. No, oh, not shit. cheating on the Vita. The so Vita is. You're gonna show us. You're gonna show us how to do it on the PS4. Plain I'll simple. play it on the PS4. Yeah, you are. Yeah. That's goddamn right. Yeah, but you know what? I don't even know if I want to show you my tricks because Jason's gonna climb the ladder and he's gonna talk <laughs> shit. <laughs> when he finally beats me. Like he had the great fucking run and knew how to do it. Just not talk to. Just talk to him about the Mets. That's all. I, I'm gonna lead Which you astray. Mean. Okay, so anyways, video games are out. Lots of video games. Yeah. Let's get it out of the way. Let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. Fucking Super Meat Boy. Yes! There it is. It's a tile! <laughs> What's Hyle doing? Hyle fell down the steps. <laughs> are, you, are you, like, jerking off on your iPad, Hyle? No, I'm, I'm searching porn on Pornhub. Okay. Yeah. I... Uh, okay, so I was not playing enough Fallout. So, anyways, let's get to the uh, the big the big elephant in the room. Fallout yeah. Four. Uh, I w- you know we've been doing normal mode videos for a couple weeks now. Yeah, they're good. By the way, I, I watch I, you guys. I don't know if I want to mention this. I don't know if I want to mention this. Actually, you know what? If I think I shouldn't say it, I shouldn't say it. I think it's the opposite of that. You think I should say it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tease it, just tease it. No, no, tease it. So just tease it. I want to play. I want to do normal mode videos. All right. So this isn't really a spoiler because uh, they've shown it in videos. In the beginning of Fallout Four, you live in the pre-war before the bombs go off. Bombs go off. You go into the vault, and somebody kidnaps your baby. I've wanted to play as an angry mother going through Fallout, commentating as an angry mother looking for her son. I like the idea. You like the idea? What was the original how, idea? <laughs> I'm not saying the original idea. How do you, how I'm do you not keep saying that going. Is it going to be snippets of you? Are we going to like see you going into a house going, "Where's my baby?" And then it's going to cut to like you at the grocery store going, "Where's my baby?" Or is it going to be is it going to be like you actually being like me you know, me playing can't find him anywhere for like <laughs> 70 hours. <laughs> that for 70 hours. No, I, I, I wanted to do it in a particular type of voice. Um, Sassy yeah, Black. Come on. Oh, do the voice. No, I can't do it. <laughs> it's offensive. It is. <laughs> See, I just wanted to be like, yo, where's my baby at? I just want to walk around. With, oh, no. Oh, hell no, Super Mutants. You ain't going to fuck with me, Super Mutants. Where's my baby at? Wow. <laughs> I don't know if offensive is the word, <laughs> but I definitely can't pigeonhole what, what you are right now. Racist. You're like a cross between Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> and a and, Polish contestant. <laughs> <laughs> and Prison Mike from The Office. <laughs> prison Mike. Did you just call them Maury Povich people contestants? Contestants. They're contestants. It's a game <laughs> show, really. If you really think about it, you're not the father. Maybe you are. Maybe you aren't. It's a game. Yeah. <laughs> So, so anyways, <laughs> Fallout 4 is fucking awesome. Yeah, it really is. It's it's it, it's so deep and it's got so many systems. The only thing I don't like is it doesn't explain any of those fucking systems at all. Yeah, but you know what? You know, I was thinking about No, there's this no because, you know what. 
Yeah, but there. Let me give you a new. Let me give you a. You know what though? Because I'm going to tell you that this is one of my one of my things that I'm as I'm getting older. I'm progressively getting more um, irritated with is having to learn video games, and like most of the time, games are similar enough now where like you can pick them up and kind of get a feel for what they want you to do. And Fallout Four is not that. Like it totally launches you into a world with very little explanation of what they actually want you to do. So you're telling don't me you... since you're 48, you don't want to do any more learning. I'm not 48 years old, <laughs> but I do. I <laughs> I'm nowhere near that. But but what I do want is is I want like there to be an understanding that like when you get into a game like Fallout that is going to offer you 200 hours of gameplay, that there is going to be a 10 hour learning curve before you feel like you're at a pace where you're actually enjoying the game firing at all cylinders. So in that respect, like, Learning the game, you die a shit ton at the beginning of Fallout 4. You die like around every corner. You got to be I very didn't. calculated. Okay. Well, <laughs> John, you're amazing. Except you can't be super meat boy. But. Oh, you, but, had, you had to go there. You had to burn. I'm going to beat that for you too. I'm going to be super meat boy for you too when I get there with my eyes closed. Oh, yeah. That's why, anyway. that's why your nine year old son had to beat super meat boy for you. He's a He didn't beat it for me. He beat it for you. All right, we're off the beaten track. We will finish this conversation. I'll tell you what, we'll finish this conversation when I'm beating the game for you this weekend. Um, So the the point of what I'm I'm getting at, though, is that isn't there – don't you have to give a game that is that big a little bit more slack in the learning the systems category? Because those systems are what's providing you 200 hours of fun. No, because when when I clear out an area and it's like put a power generator here and you need 10 power and it doesn't tell me I have fucking a thousand steel back in my base in sanctuary and i'm yeah. at, and i'm at this other base and it's like you need steel and i don't know what the fuck to do how the you fu- got to build up you got to build up two more charisma a couple more charisma points uh-huh. right and so you can get the perk that allows your workbenches to be shared from all different camps see but they like i i feel like that should have been explained in the beginning like if I'm going to have a connected network of workbenches. It should be like, hey, just FYI, like a small little box. If yeah. you get this perk, you can connect all your workbenches and you can build it up easier. Instead, yeah, it- instead, it's like, oh, now I want to finish this perk. Now I have to go level twice yeah. and get this fucking perk. Right. But here's the deal is that you are so early in the game, John, that you are not. I guarantee you haven't even been to Diamond City yet. Yeah, I have. You've been to Diamond City. Yeah, I've been to Diamond City. I met with the All reporter right. lady. Okay, don't talk about it. It's what you're spoiling. But here's the deal. Oh, you that. haven't been to Diamond City? No, I haven't gone yet. I haven't oh, gone see, yet because see, for, you're busting for, my balls. You're like, I bet you're so far in, blah, blah, blah. No. You're not even at Diamond City yet, boy. And here I, I, I am, admit, bitch. Bitch, I admit that I'm I gave, in Diamond fucking City. Yeah, I'm at the I, fucking green, whatever you call it. What do you call the thing call, in the back? Don't, I'm going to coach you guys through your monster. feelings. Okay. Yeah. Listen. Sounds like you. Now, now I want to guy. play it. It's ruined now. Now it's ruined. Now it's ruined for Hyle. But here's here's the thing though is that Wait, and happened? yes, I I admit that I did not give you enough credit, but the whole beginning of the game is is like a, a playground. There's like 50 locations you can go to in just learning the game before you go to Diamond City. Like I'm totally at a point where I'm like, okay, it's time to go to Diamond City. Well, and, that's that's one of the other problems with the game. Um, Unfortunately, I was reading up on some of the quests. Like, I've been doing the uh, Minutemen quests where it's like, go yep. here and clear out X. And yep. uh, did you find the Brotherhood of Steel? I have not yet. Okay. Uh, they have a similar type of quest where it's like, go here and clear out, right? And I yep. thought they were a finite amount of quests. It turns out right. they're like the Skyrim quests where they're procedurally okay. generated. Now, here I, I, here I am at level 20, way yeah. over leveled, thinking that it was going to be over. These quest wow. these okay. quest lines were gonna have an end, mm-hmm. but they keep procedurally uh, procedurally generating uh, I see. these missions to go clear out areas, and now I'm totally wow. over leveled. You're, you're level twenty, huh? Yeah. Wow. What what level did you go to Diamond City? Uh, I think I s- went around thirteen or fourteen. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah, so I decided to go, but the pro- like I said, the problem was it was just like the game. It's great that a game gives you so much freedom. But, yes, but yeah. like it's so great. You the base building, the weapon crafting, all that Love shit it. is incredible. It's so good. But so good. you have to admit, you need a smidge of hand holding to be like, 
Hey, just so you know, these qu <laughs> we we had rumblings. <laughs> but it sometimes a game needs to say, "Hey, just so you know, like these quests never end." Because I would have sat there, being a completionist that I am, right. I would have I would have played those quests forever, hit level fifty, and then I would have been like, "Fuck!" Now what do I do? I can blast through all this content that was supposed to be fun and challenging, and now I'm just like overpowered for the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if it's the rest of the game is accurate, but I a, mean, a lot it, of it, a lot of it, a lot of it, and um, and I mean, you know, Fallout Three, you ended that game pretty much being overpowered all all of the like mothership zeta and point lookout and all that stuff i think i just blew right through in fallout 3 and i don't know what they'll do with dlc in fallout 4 but um you're right i mean the, the the sense of freedom in the game the build the world building the just like the little connections that like isn't this the first fallout game that you actually feel like you're in the wasteland like scavenging um resources like when I started playing Fallout 3, I, I just picked up as much shit as I could before I realized that junk meant absolutely nothing in Fallout 3. And the fact that it means something in Fallout 4 makes the game so much better. I don't no, know. I, can't... I felt like I was in the wasteland in Fallout 3. Really? I mean, I Burn. guess I did too, but Fallout Burn. 4 is more immersive. Way more immersive. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot more immersive. And yeah. like, I mean, like, listen, it, it, the only thing I wish is they wouldn't have made another one of those games with the glitches. Yep. I mean, the glitches are nice and fun, but like, come on, like, there are reports of it hitting zero frames per second on Xbox yeah, One, and it's just like, funny. it's like, come on, it's 2015, guys, yeah. get with the fucking times. You know what I'll say is that I think the game is absolutely beautiful too. What happened to your huge erection? I told you to save it for the podcast. You've been pouring We're the podcast. You've been you've been jizzing Fallout all over me, and Ugh. and now you can't talk about it for more than like five minutes. I can talk about it all day, man. Like what? Like let's pick a, a point to talk about because right. pros, pros, pros. What are your pros? What am I? Well, okay, uh, my pros are it has excellent graphics. No, I. I, I think that the... <laughs> he just asked you what the fucking pros were. You go, it has excellent graphics, and then you go, no, 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 no. <laughs> Pick a fucking pro. Well, I I think I think that graphics are like a hotbed issue for a lot of people that worry about. Who stuff gives like a fuck? That. The game looks great for 2015. I think the game the game looks great. You know what? I I like the fact that it's it's Fallout Three on steroids. Like my pros are the open world. Um, you know, in infinite people to talk to, memorable characters, places to go, the feeling of like going over that next hill, knowing that on like your little map on your bottom compass, there's something getting closer. And you know that like it's something that's like worth your time and attention. Like I really, really appreciate that. Um, and my big thing is that it's not online. I absolutely love that Fallout 4 is a completely 100% offline game. Nobody can bug me. Don't take offense to this because I love gaming with you guys, but nobody can bug me. Nobody can uh, – I don't have – like I can actually use the suspend mode hey, on can I interrupt the PlayStation you 4. You don't yeah. game with us to begin with. Well, we game. Some, you, uh, let me put it to you this way. You guys are the only people I game with. Oh, aren't we lucky, Pat? What about your kids? Yeah, what about your kids? Well, I, I game with my kids. But I mean online gaming. Like people – I started a thread on GameSpot about it and like people – most people were like totally agreeing with my point of view about their not being online being a great thing. But some people are like I'd love to see a co-op fallout and honestly, I wouldn't. No, I don't want to see that. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go through the wasteland with anybody else. I want it to be me by myself and my dog. Oh, you don't want to hang out with me in the wasteland? No. Yeah, I don't want to hang out with you in the wasteland. What if so we can crack dick and fart jokes in the middle of the fucking wasteland? Yeah, that's what buddies do in the wasteland, right, Jason? I don't think I would do that. <laughs> what would you do? Yeah, I do? wouldn't either. I would probably curl up into a ball and cry. Right. Thank you. Jason doesn't want to be in my wasteland. <laughs> Not at all. See? I want to be in the wasteland of your panties. Oh, don't what happened to your what happened to your video? I, I don't know. It's an audio podcast. I know, but I like looking at you guys. I, I'm trying my Damn, my just... connection. So, anyways, uh, cons yeah. cons of Fallout Four. Wow. Um, I mean, performance issues. If that's your thing, then um, you definitely have. You know, there are there are 
glitches. There are definitely have been times where I've had to revert to old saves because I'm clipped into a wall or I got stuck behind a shed. Um, <laughs> don't ask me what I was doing behind the shed. <laughs> um, but Jason, um, want to take a guess? Not at all. Once again, don't want to be in his wastelands. No, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jason's already curled up in a ball in his own wasteland. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. What, how about you? Like, what are what are the things? I mean, is there anything really standing out that really bugs you about Fallout Four? Uh, I'm not a particular. Give me one second. Let me reposition here. I'm not too crazy. I mean, like the uh, the base building stuff is really, really great. I'm not crazy about it. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish. Like one thing, Metal Gear Solid: The Phantom Pain got right is it had like an overarching like, hey, recruitment thing, and you could place people yeah. wherever. Like Fallout doesn't have that, and you need to put people on, you know, on defense posts and this and that yeah. and blah blah blah. Like, and I wish it was kind of like, hey, if this is how you want to recruit more people, like I put up um, a radio beacon, like a transmitter to recruit people into Sanctuary, and it's like radio beacon loss and it's like i only i had five people and then two more people joined so it's like why aren't more people joining my settlement if i put up a radio transmitter to lead them there you know what i mean yeah like it's it it the like i understand the mechanics of fallout ba- like the bats the looting the this the yeah. rpg elements but the stuff that they added they do not speak about at all and they need they i think they needed to add something to be like listen a five minute tutorial on base building and how to uh bring people in that would have been really really great yeah um i mean is it fair to evoke the fact that basically what base building is is 3d fallout shelter like didn't you kind of know when you were going through those first couple missions as they were telling you how to set up your radio tower how to um you know uh, c- set up a food system and a water supply like like for me it all clicked back to fallout shelter i'm like fallout 4's base building is 3d fallout shelter yeah i got that right away and so but i didn't play fallout shelter like i shouldn't have to play a game to understand a concept happening in another game i i I agree with you i agree with you but i have to admit that i i have not run into much of an issue see that's because you played fucking fallout shelter like a crack fiend yeah, and I'm not, I'm not saying that the two directly relate. Like, there's definitely, um, you know, the long pressing the touchpad if you're playing it on PS4 that brings up your creation editor. Um, you know, that all that stuff is very quick moving, intuitive. It's it utilizes the, the, the junk in your workbench very quickly. Um, it's very upfront with like how much equipment you actually have and resources you have. Like. It's not a bad system, I don't think. I, maybe someone could disagree with me, but um, I, I'm cool with the way that I flow through all of its systems to build my town up. But um, I guess my fear at this point is like, how the hell am I going to maintain and manage all of these? I mean, I've, I'm, I'm not even 20 hours into the game, and I've already got, I think, four or five settlements and I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm saying I don't have enough junk and supplies to even sustain sanctuary, let alone start expanding outward. So I am a little bit worried about how that's going to be because I don't want that element of the game to take over. It um, seems I, like it already has. You're like yeah. you basically just bought Fallout to play The Sims. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm doing mission uh, after I, mission. I, after I, mission. I, 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 I'm doing missions so I can build up my base and... <laughs> <laughs> seriously seriously <laughs> sounds like you need a strategy god and you need to play the game jeff <laughs> <laughs> i guess this is what happened yeah i need a strategy guy no i don't and that's the thing is i don't feel like i need a strategy guy. i feel like i'm just enjoying every minute no. i'm in the game no no no, no. animal so. needs a strategy drag i strag. need a drag what's fucking a strag? headphones a strategy guide and fucking jeff you need to just fix your life <laughs> 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 is is this is this it, Jeff? Is this is this the game your wife finally divorces you over? You know, we've had some very serious conversations over the last few days, and uh, like, what, I have an, like, what did yeah. she say when the pit boy came in? She goes, "Is this she kind of?" She goes, "Is this where she, our kids' tuition money is going towards?" Yeah, she kind of walked past me in in her business power suit, <laughs> and and was kind of just shaking her head like you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so, I definitely have already worn it. It's already displayed downstairs and it's amazing. Can can you show us later? 
Yeah, I'll go get it. Uh, Talk right, to Heil for a second. I'm going to go get it. Heil? I think Heil's He's not even gone. back. He's you gone. guys talk. No, no, no. You stay guys. here. Show us after the show. Okay, show you know what? That's show. a good point because nobody else can see it. Um. So uh, another game came out that I want to talk about. Yeah. Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, yeah. I bought, I'm really surprised at you. I, I, I Well, all right. Uh, real quick before we uh, we go too far. Uh, thought, final thoughts on Fallout? Great game. Oh. Uh. But I'm gonna it's, I'm it's, gonna spend hunt I'm gonna spend at least a hundred hours in it. Easily, easily, oh. it, it's it is easily the game of the year for me so far. It's exactly what I wanted in a Fallout sequel from Bethesda, and um, even right down to the soundtrack, man, that fucking game is aces. And you know what, dude, haters be damned. That game does way more right than it'll ever do wrong. Scale of one to ten. For me, it's a ten. John. Uh, I'd give it a really solid nine. A solid nine. Huh. Rave review. He's trying to be mis- he's trying to be mysterious. No, I'm not trying to be I'll mysterious. Be- they don't explain anything at the beginning of the game. How can Jason, I learn if shit? It? If no. oh no, don't Wah. you don't. Wah. I'm gonna fucking come there and kill you, Jason. Did you play yeah. Fallout? No, I didn't. <laughs> not at all. So he's just been sitting here. This is too complicated. No, it's not. it's not. Don't that, listen to John. It's not that complicated. Just because John doesn't know how to build things. I like simple things. Like Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, yeah, easy. Let's talk about Star Wars Battlefront. Let's talk about Battlefront because, you know, my, and I'm, I'm going to let you run this whole thing here. But because I bitched I'm, out and cried to you yesterday. I was like, no. I, was like, I don't think there's enough content. I don't think I want to buy it. And then I totally that's, went out that, and bought that's it. That's what you and, – and listeners, you know, you should know something that John – Nine out of ten times, because John, whenever Tuesday comes around, every Tuesday, <laughs> I get a I get a message from John saying, "Oh, this is man, oh, this is really really great game that's coming out. It's called whatever it is that week." And this <laughs> man, like, um, I don't know. Do you think I should get it? Because like I've got these like <laughs> gift cards that'll bring it down to forty dollars, and like I'm thinking I should get it, but I don't know. And I have to talk him through his feelings on getting the game, but. So, of course, he waffles on fucking Battlefront because I, I know he's going to. So he waffles and he goes and gets it. But the thing that shocks me is that why would you intermingle a fast-paced, casual, multiplayer, online shooter like Battlefront while you're playing Fallout? Uh, that makes no sense be- to me, man. You're, you're pissing all over both experiences. Uh, I, because I'm not a gamer that's one to be like, you know, when they say there's like, uh, what do they say? Like, there's piss in my porridge. Like, yeah, I guess what's so. that saying? Like, I've never heard that saying before in my life. We're gonna look yeah. it up after this. We'll, we'll, we'll have it for next week. We'll have it for next week's show. Or we'll talk about it on a normal. You mode. said yes, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. Pissing no, or like, or like, or like, or uh, like, there's a there's a fly in my the, the fly in my suit. It's fine. The fly in my suit. There's piss in my porridge. <laughs> piss in my porridge. No, there's there's a fly in my suit. Like, I'm not one of those gamers that's like, uh, there's piss in my porridge. No, I'm not one of those gamers that's like, oh, there's a fly in my soup. Like, I can't play Battlefront and Fallout at the same time. Like, I can, um, I can, um, can you do? I can go between games very easily. I'm not one to sit there and be like, I'm going between Tomb Raider, Fallout, and uh, Battlefront right now. And those are the only games I'm going through. Man, I, poof, I, 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 I'll have a game going. I'll have a game going on the Vita. Mm-hmm. I'll have a game going on the Vita at all times. I'll have a game going on on my PS4 at all times. But, but no, nah, man, games like that. <sighs> uh, Tomb Raider is my Sunday game. Fallout is my strictly Saturday <laughs> game, and uh, every other day game. And then uh, work and adulting is my. Yeah, when do you get game. laid? Never. <laughs> uh Getting late is my Monday morning thing. Get, getting <laughs> getting late is my Monday morning thing. Um, no, but Battlefront is it's solid. Jason it I'm, Jason has more of an erection over it because he lo- it. he's then, a, then, he, then move away. I want to talk to Jason. All right, about talk that. to Jason about it. I'm what do you want to hear? I'm what do you want to know? Customer. Well, I mean, you know, like I, I want more Battlefront. Is that what I'm getting, or am I getting some cockamamie EA fucking microtransaction bullcrap? Like, there, what am I, I have there I haven't seen any microtransactions. <laughs> fucking headphones are pissing me off. I can't hear you, so let me know when I need to put my headphones on. <laughs> uh, but no, I haven't seen any microtransactions. 
The gameplay is pretty smooth as far as I can tell right now. Runs really well. And the, the scenery is ridiculous. Like, I actually feel like I'm in Star Wars. It's amazing. Oh, it's so good. Um, all right. And now here's here's a question. What about things like uh, weapons? Like, um, John was saying, you know, Jeff, I really want to get the game, but there's only like eight weapons. And he started crying. And I'm like, is <laughs> is, is it 10 oh, weapons? There's 10. 11. 11. Eleven. Well, one of them like the expansion, right? Expansion. Well, how many can you shoot yeah. at a time? I think the Han Solo one. You can uh, the Han Solo. No, I think there are eleven in the base game. Twelve. With they the give you Han Solo's. I watched your normal around. mode. I watched your normal mode this morning on my way to work, and yeah. uh, where you guys were, John kept bringing out the Han Solo pistol. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, anyways. <laughs> So, so the game is is solid all around. Like uh, maps, uh, do you feel like here's something? I played the beta, and the maps in the beta I thought were fine, uh, and I, I think they only released one for like full out multiplayer. But it was like a medium range shooter. Like I was clipping dudes from across the map, and like it seemed yeah, yeah. like that's how I was dying. You still can, <laughs> all the way across. It's the not, map. It's, it, and it's it's just die. It's it's lived lifespans are twenty five seconds long. Yeah. How have you explained yeah. it? Uh, it's chaos. It's pure chaos on certain pure chaos. certain game modes. Yeah. Like it's twenty on twenty, and it's just lasers everywhere. It's, it's insane. When the lasers when the lasers are whizzing past your head, though, it is pretty fucking epic. And the right, sound so Jason, is just you... like ridiculous. Yeah. That's that I, did... library. Yeah. So are you – let me ask you this. So you've played the game probably a good five, six hours. It came out yesterday, yesterday, right? So you guys have probably put in a few hours in it. Um, are you going to be sick of this game in, in another five, six hours? In another five or six hours? No. Probably another like couple of months. It's – you know what it is? A couple months. The, com- the competitive nature of games like um, – you know what it is? I think they put enough modes in where you can play it. Like bad Battlefield Bad Company Two, uh, what was it? The Rush Mode, where the games have, s- I they have so many dynamics, like the heroes and the power ups, yeah. where the tide of a battle can change immediately, and it mm-hmm. it can it it'll keep the game fresh. I still wish they had put in like a Battlefield Rush type mode because I thought that'd be fucking epic with all the vehicles the Star Wars universe has. I agree with that. Um. Where like the Imperials defend or the Rebels yeah, you defend, just grab and you a ship, just you yeah, do whatever you need to do. Otherwise, you have to wait for it. You know, oh, I finally got an X-wing. I can get in the fucking X-wing now. You gotta pick pick up tokens for all the special stuff. But the only issue with it, and it's a big issue, is the season pass. This fifty dollars season pass is r- ridiculous. Uh, that's it's ridiculous. Just not right. Those things, guys, come on, don't buy that shit. Is fun. You know what? Didn't. You tell me a season pass that's been worth it. I can. Um, actually, I can. Um, yeah, of course, John can. Yeah, I can. played every game that's ever came out. Yeah. Um, the last season pass I bought that was actually worth it was um, Shadow uh, of Mordor. Shadow of Mordor, actually. Shadow of Mordor released new content weekly, with new challenge missions. Uh, I guess the Witcher. You can right. get. Or or the Witcher. The I didn't buy the Witcher season. Yeah, but pass. the Witcher is all is it's all free, isn't it? Aren't, isn't, no, aren't there all they, their DLCs they gave they, they gave sixteen pass. free DLCs, and then uh, their expansions: Hearts of Stone, Heart of Stone, and the other one. I don't remember the name of the other one. Uh, I don't I think, think they released the name of the other one, but they're all, like, I, and they only sold Heart of Stone for eight dollars. Wow. I'm they just going to wait for a right. super a super um, game of the year edition on that. I'm going to get it. Of what? Battlefront or Witcher? Witcher. Of the Witcher. Like, I haven't played it yet. What's going on there? <laughs> Hi, Hi, Kyle. I think our boy's back. Kyle's typing again. Oh, he's got. I am back. All Sorry, right. I had an um, emergency. Go ahead. Are you okay? Is everything okay? Yeah, I was um. <laughs> Yeah, something stupid. Our kitchen sprayer decided to uh, crap out, so... Anyway, I got taken care of. (laughs) (laughs) I'm imagining Hyle, like, soaking wet right now. I was, earlier. Welcome to Pedal to the Metal, everybody. (laughs) So, um... Battlefront is really good. Jason, any other last thoughts on Battlefront? Or actually, let's talk about... Like, it's, it's a good game. The season pass is too expensive. 
they're only releasing four DLCs with it, but knowing Dice, the DLCs have been really expansive. Though yeah. I will wait for a twenty five dollar sale on that DLC. I mean, I heard a whole bunch more maps. Um, four more. I'd probably argue too that um, the last GTA, the like heroes expansion packs for that. Um, both the what about a gay Tony? What was the other one? Lost in the Damned. So I don't know if that was the season pass, but those seemed worth it. Wasn't uh, Fallout 3's DLC worth it? The uh, Brotherhood of the Steel and they didn't have Fallout. they didn't have a season uh, pass yeah, though. Season pass for that. They, um, but but each expansion I think was it ten ten dollars for each expansion? Yeah. yeah. No, those were those were twenty. No, 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 no. They were Brotherhood 10 of the Steel was no Brotherhood of the Steel was twenty, wasn't it? Twenty? I don't think so. I think each one was ten. There were five. There was Mothership Zeta, Point Lookout, Brotherhood of Steel. Was that was that what it's called? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, um, you know what? Gen- generally speaking, though, I I literally ignore even even if Mass Effect. I don't even Mass Effect may have even done one on Mass Effect three with the multiplayer or whatever. I oh. honestly just ignore it. Twenty bucks each. Uh, no, hold on. Uh, oh, in addition, no, they were nine ninety nine each. Thank you. The Fallout 3 game add-on pack was made available on May 26, 2009 and consists of Operation Anchorage, The Pit, mm-hmm. and a Vault Boy poster. The second pack was published on August 25th, 2009 and contains Broken Steel and Point Broken. Lookout. Both retail packages cost 19.99. So they they bundled them up and they released them for 19.99. Oh, maybe so, I so so Operation Anchorage, that one was one. Um, that one was a good one. That was like uh, you were actually fighting against the Chinese army in that one. I remember. Did you play that one, John? Yeah, that goes back to actually like right after the war happened, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, and you get good. to you get to play in the time technically of Fallout Four. Would you would you want to play Fallout from the perspective of the Chinese? I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't I mean? Come on, wouldn't that be? I mean, here's the thing: is that. The cool thing about Fallout from the perspective of an American is that you're relating to, you know, we're relating to our our music, our time, you know what I mean, like our land, whatever. If you played it in in China, you would be in a devastated wasteland, but everybody would be Chinese. Huh, that's interesting. I don't know. I'd like to play as like not the Chinese. Canadian. They already live in the nuclear Fallout wasteland. Mexican. No, I, I would like to see it from a different perspective, and it's nice that Bethesda has the whole world. I'd, li- I'd really like to see New York next, or at least a DLC that takes you to New York City. Yeah. yeah. Australia. A DLC well, that maybe, takes you to Australia. Maybe, maybe we'll get one in, um, maybe, well, I don't know. NYC's a whole game in itself. That's a whole game. That's a, that's a, I was going to say maybe we'll see it in Fallout 4, but it's, it's a no, whole it's game. Too, it's too big. Boston's too big. But I'm really curious as to see what their DLC packages are. Yeah. So. Yeah, I um. I say we you know, we brought it right back to Fallout. I know. Yeah, I'm always. sorry, but bring it full yeah. circle. Yeah. Well, anyways, I mean, how's uh, Rocket League going, Jason? You liking it still? Um, I haven't played it in a while. Ever since Battlefront came into your life? No, actually, NBA came into my life. I haven't played a NBA basketball video game in fucking fifteen years. Why is that? I don't know. I don't. I, you know what, man? I was a huge Dominique. Yeah, we did. We guy. played. Uh, we, we played. Oh, the, we played NBA um, Jam. NBA yeah, Jam is what's up, though. I love. We have NBA Jam on the 360. I love that game. Yeah, you have I, a I PS4, lied. For Jason. What? You have for PS4? Yeah, I got it for PS4. Uh, it's nice. I had the last years. If you want to play sometime, but I got 15 for uh, or 16 for. Uh, the Xbox One, but yeah, I played my friend who plays like every day. He beat me by fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Usually they even it out. Fifty points. Yeah, he took the Cavs. How bad yeah, do you suck me. at basketball? Nice, yeah, nice friend you got there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I told him I'm taking the All Stars next time. My goal would be to get it within twenty. So <laughs> just start. Fouling. Yeah, I couldn't even tell you five NBA players. So real quick, we're coming up to the end of the podcast here. Um Heil, let's talk about Tomb Raider. I've only played uh, through the first tomb, so I'm still in the ice cave cavern. I've gotten to the second area. Okay. Well, third if you count the first um, uh, tutorial little spot. So 
the third area where you, you got collectibles and there's actually a tomb. So it's really great. Um, this same type of uh, upgrade system. This time they added a little twist where um, uh, there's reading of um, I call them hieroglyphics, but uh, that's Egyptian. But um, basically, languages you can't read, and the only way to get them is to look at um, uh, murals that you can and. She reads those and it increases her knowledge, and then she can um, basically translate the next uh, the next uh, level, I guess, uh, level of uh, language. But they only show you like hidden coins, like hidden coin stashes. But so it's it's a little it's a little neat. Um, but the the tomb that I went to so far has been it's been great. Lots of jumping. Um, How's the game look? Some puzzle. Action. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Oh, it looks fantastic. I posted a couple of screenshots, but I know you guys a couple of you don't have Xbox Ones, but I I, so I was really looking good. at I was looking at your screenshots. You took some really good ones. So it's gonna look. Um, fucking, I love that type of game. It's gonna look fucking so, fantastic on PC. I think oh, no doubt about it. On PC. Huh. I think most things do. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. It's it's a really good game. They fixed everything from Tomb Raider 2013, and uh, I think I still it's... Don't like a, yeah, I still don't like about it though is um, kind of like with most other mild RPG type games, which I know that's not, but they have you know the upgrades about they make you get so many points in the first level before you can move to the second, so you really can't specialize in like survival or or hunting or um, what's the other one. Uh, combat i guess it's not combat it's, it's, like it's that. hunter brawler and survivalist yeah so they make you get like say 20 points between all three and then the only way to get that is basically you know an even character so you can't like say i want three levels of uh um you know survivor that makes sense kind of like far cry four or three where you know before you move on to the next level you have to have so many points in in one tree um, in one part of the tree yeah so i mean it makes you spread across which is fine but it's, you know i wish there's a little more freedom there but it's really good though so far i like it it's really a sharp game like they took everything they took everything about the uh the original tomb raider 2013 and they just layered and layered and layered and layered and layered and I would say it's a, a really dense third-person game. It's got a lot of options, a lot of open spaces. Um, climbing, climbing mechanic is still the same, but you know, but it's kind of Metroidy where you need certain things to go back. Remember how Tomb Raider had points in the map where it was like, yep. it's like you got the items. It's like they open that idea up more where it's like, hey, you need this item, so come back here yeah, later, which I is really cool. I already need the rope. Um rope attachment to the arrows to go up this one spot so but that's yeah i mean i can't find much fault in it the music's fantastic the sound effects the stealth the enemies you know seem somewhat it's it's visceral it's a really yeah. visceral game like so... like the only thing i don't like i guess the only thing is like the little juxtaposition it's like lara croft is the sympathetic person who's searching for the holy grail <laughs> And she's like, imagine what this can do for medicine and life and death and this and that. And then she ends up on this mountain in Syria and she's just brutally like shoving arrows in dudes' throats. Yeah. So it's still a little, I don't think they hit their tone, but they definitely made Tomb Raider fun again. Yeah. I thought the, I thought the remake was in 2013 was awesome and I... Everything I've read about this new one sounds like they really did are doing the franchise justice. Um, I agree. Uh, yeah. Um, is it is it worth picking up an X one over? No. Kyle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Considering the fact that it's coming out for PC in February and PS four next Q four, it might make me because I enjoy the genre. I'm one of those people that you know is one of those oddball. You know, even though it's going to come out for other systems later on, it, if I didn't have an Xbox One, it might push me over the edge to get one. Just because, um, well, right now, they're bundles. You can get uh, that game plus the original game plus an Xbox for... 350 I think so. It might even be 300 so... Like, you know what it is? For me, there need to be at least five or six games to push me over the edge to buy a console. Yeah. Like, And there is. The, I would say there are probably five now. 
Would you add Halo, Halo, Halo 5 would probably be the what? one. Would you add Halo 5? I got the Halo 5. I haven't played Halo 5 I got the Halo 5, 5 yet. console. I, so Jeff, I, you should tight. be proud of me. I still never bought Halo 5. Wow. I got the Elite controller, too. I never bought Halo 5. Wait till this I'm shocked. Um, that being said, I would say probably Halo 5, Halo Master Chief Collection, Sunset Overdrive, Tomb Raider. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think... And I think that's really it for me. If you're really into racers, Forza. You know, I PC me. Ori the Blind Forest is a fantastic game. Yeah. If you don't have a game PC capable of playing it. Yeah. I mean, argue that you know, Rise was fun for me. I mean, I didn't like. I know Rise. it got a four, but I like the setting and it looked really pretty. Yeah, but looks only get people so far, Heil. Dead Rising three. Yeah, but that's on PC now too. Forza Horizon 2 is fantastic. For I uh, that's on Xbox 360. It's not it's not what it is on X1 though. No, it's not, but it's still on Xbox 360. It's like Shadow of Mordor. May, it was even made by a completely different team. Yeah, they took they took out the uh, Nemesis system for Shadow of Mordor for the yeah. last gen consoles. Titanfall is now free too, so you can play that. Yeah, so. It's which I know it is it's on the not PC too, but... wait, it's free. Well, it's like five dollars with it's all the free. DLC. So what's that game from here? Is that are they gonna have a second game? And does anyone even care? They already announced it. It goes to PS4 as well because EA yeah. realized they made a big mistake in right. going solely. And you well, know what? Microsoft I, probably greased them too. Yeah, but you know what? I'm sure like Square Enix. I'm like I'm sh- I'm sure they're. Um, listen, I don't mind. I don't mind um I don't mind companies trying to like do what they need to do to make it competitive but like did you see how much Tomb Raider sold in the UK last week? It sold nothing. It sold 63k over Fallout's 230k. Like you know what, man? But though, but the, but that what? says but that says of, something. That says of... something, though. That says something about what? About the about the console being se- um, a, a, about... just about about shitty business moves. Like all right. Like I'm sure Square Enix needed the money to fund another Tomb Raider because God knows they released that thing like seven yeah. fucking times. Right. Are you gonna God throw bless. up on no. the podcast? No. God bless. God bless me. Uh, no, but I mean, like, God knows that Square Enix probably wanted the money because they didn't want to pay for it out of pocket, and Microsoft Microsoft greased some hands. But dude, like, Tomb Raider is such a good game. I would call it one of the best games of the fall, and I will definitely so, put it in my top five this year. It's just a shame it came out on a platform where, like, less than I'm gonna say, than less than five hundred thousand people will buy it by year's end in the U.S. So are you saying that the sales are so bad because people are protesting or boycotting buying the game? Not or are protesting you that... or boycotting. They ju- okay. they just like Tomb Raider. There's just not there's just I not enough saturation the of, e- I honestly of do. the e- what I think they put like oh my god these headphones <laughs> if they like they picked a bad time to bring it out. Well, they released it on the day that Fallout Four came exactly. out. Exactly, it's a horrible idea. They released the week before Battlefront. Also a horrible idea. And yeah, but they also they also push more more software from uh, November through December than they probably do for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you know, games coming out at Christmas time is not an unheard of thing, and games push big numbers. Like Fallout, what did they say? Fallout pushed twelve million co- um, copies on day one, or something ridiculous they, like they, that. They and sh- that's what COD. Shipped. They shipped. They shipped. Okay, but that's with COD out. That's with Battlefront coming out. That I mean, these games are. I know that you're right, Jason, that they do cannibalize each other's sales, but because of the time of the year that they come out, they're all going to grab their sales. Assassin's mm-hmm. Creed's going to get it. I just don't see Tomb Raider competing with Fallout or Battlefront. You're right. But that's the other you're thing. Right. Microsoft could have – Microsoft could have – I think they could have released it in August, let's say, like as a kickoff to the fall. That, that would have been, been great. Big. Yeah, that would have been a big kickoff for them. Or – but you know what the other problem is, though, Jeff? They d- they didn't want to compete with Uncharted Four, which is coming out in March. Is when the original uh, when the original um, Tomb Raider came out. Like I feel like Tomb Raider is one of those games that's not a fall game, and Microsoft tried to make it big. And when the numbers come back, and like 
less than 500k, buy it in the U.S. Like Square is going to be like, well, see, blah blah blah. Fallout's a weird game to choose to begin. I mean, uh, Tomb Raider is a weird game yeah. to choose to begin with. Like here's had, the thing, though. Yeah. Like right. had it been Call of Duty, like oh, we sucked up Call of Duty for like six months, like right. that would have been fucking huge. Yeah, but here's the thing: is that what game was supposed to come out this Christmas on PlayStation Four? Uncharted. And Uncharted is got pushed to 2016. Why did Microsoft lock down Tomb Raider? Well, the answer is because that's their competition to Uncharted. They don't have to go out and make another Uncharted that uh, um, an Xbox. But, but Uncharted. why are they? Why are They've they? They've got Tomb Raider. Why are they? So com- why they, are they competing with Uncharted when Tomb Raider is coming out on the PS4 in next December? Yeah. Yeah, but see, but but the, that's but, the, the, the launch. No, the <laughs> launch window of a game is where you're going to get a, a shit ton of those sales. But and those if, sales aren't happening right now. The bottom line is they have to make a lineup that looks good through the holiday season. Yeah, Microsoft but, is doing that with with Tomb Raider, and the initial plan was that Uncharted was going to be out at this time too. So <laughs> it was a tit for tat thing. By locking down Tomb Raider through this holiday season, you arguably have as good of a lineup as your competitor does. It just so happens that now with Uncharted being pushed off until 2016, Microsoft has a better looking winter lineup than um, than Sony does. I don't think they do because what's 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 here for Microsoft now? What is Sony coming out with? Hold on, they ju- Microsoft Microsoft just just dropped Halo Five. And Tomb Raider. Hold on, I'm so he's going to the computer. Dude, but this is what I'm them? saying. This is what, what? I'm saying. There's no killer app. Them? Well, uh, people obviously bought Halo Five. I, d- I don't know how many. I mean, they have Halo units. Five. So let's see. Uh, Need for Speed November, Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, that's weird. They re-released Deadpool. No, the, I mean, there's nothing coming out for the rest there's of the year. There's nothing coming e- out. Either yeah. system. But you know what the thing is? It speaks to me, though. As good as Tomb Raider is, I'm not denouncing that it's a, not a good game. I'm yeah. just saying Halo is overshadowing it. Fallout is overshadowing it. StarCraft sure. is overshadowing it. Star Wars is overshadowing it. And as good as that, they're, when they're like, well, uh, is, Xbox One is the place to play games this fall. It's like, well, when they find out that it only sold 125,000 throughout the rest of the year or less than 250,000. And you can correct me and yell at me and scream at me if you think I'm wrong. But when they find out it sold less than 500,000 by year's end. Like that doesn't it, doesn't that say at the end of the day it didn't make the Microsoft lineup look better when all they were really pushing for was Halo? Mm. I, yeah, I mean, I um, what? I just think they should have spread it out. They should have spread it out. They should have released it in August because it's such a good game. Like I want people to play this game. It is an evolution. It is it is it is the Terminator to Terminate. It is the Terminator two to Terminator. They took it and they made it better. Mm. Yeah. But well, I get what you're saying I mean, with the December. Like, like obviously, everyone's going to be buying the games for December, but they, I, yeah. I think they saturated the market. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued. I saw that, that thread the other day on, on GameSpot um, with uh, talking about um, the, the kind of lackluster sales in the UK. Um, my thing is, like, I just don't like the whole idea of the boycott. I know a lot of people that were like, I'm not going to fuck Square Enix. I'm not going to buy this game. And it's like, you know. If a game's good, buy it. Like, don't. Exactly. Like, if you want more games like that, buy it. That's all. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't boycott a fucking game. You're a fucking adult, not 12. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I, that, that stuff bugs me. So That's why you should buy Syndicate. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hi, Did you just stuff. fall into your room? <laughs> so, so hey, we, are we close to an hour? We got to wrap up. We, we only have six, uh, minutes. six minutes left. Oh, we should play some Rocket League. What do you think? I'll play some Rocket, Rocket League right League. now. Okay. How about you, Eroka? Um, I, I will play around with you. Guys I have to bed, poop yeah. so badly. So, if we could wrap this up. Oh, Jesus. All right, let's play some Rocket too. League. I'll All right. Around. So, wait, wait, wait. So, uh, before the podcast ends. Uh, yeah. If you're listening via YouTube, please hit the subscribe button, and thank you for listening all the way through. If you're listening via GameSpot, go to YouTube and hit the subscribe button, and thank you very much for listening. Or all just the hit way thumbs through. up. Or just hit thumbs what up. What is? 
Oh, that's right. I'll, I'll embed the video so they'll know how to get to the page. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you, everyone, for listening, of course. If it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't have a podcast. Or we'd just be talking to each other. Yeah, we would just talk thanks. to each other. I mean, we yeah. don't mind anyways. We talk to each other all the time anyways. Yeah, thanks, Dominic, for listening. And Blab, we really appreciate it. Champ. So, Champ, we K- really appreciate it. KW2. Despite KW, our... Fox Beta, all the guys that that come on the uh, the website, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we lo- we love you all. Thank you so much. And we'll be back. Uh, what we're gonna we're gonna try to get on a bi weekly schedule here. I think we chose the wrong time with fucking the holidays around the corner. There's <sighs> never a right time, man. The <sighs> holidays. The holidays. Heaven <laughs> <Kevin's> to Murgatroyd. <laughs> oh my god. So, anyways, yeah, let's get out of here. All right. Any last words? Um, go play it. Fallout and um, go try to beat, if you can, try to beat my son's score on uh, Super Meat Boy. But you, you won't, won't tell us the level. Just go to the Cotton Row. Oh, wait, you haven't beaten the game yet. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> it's in the Cotton Row. Great. Great. Hey, Love guys. You, you want some cool uh, desktops? Let's see. Hold on. Hiles is going to start. Hiles back. This is how we end. This is how we end the show with Hiel trading us awesome desk. <laughs> All right, everyone. All right. Thanks for See listening. Bye. Bye. Love Bye. You.